Kit bashing. <laughs> the kits being referenced when we're talking about kit bashing are model kits and they come with all of the little pieces to make the model. They're attached to these sprue cages. <laughs> They're in these flat things and you cut them off of their little sprues. They're the little pieces of plastic that hold them in place. And then you have all of these little tiny pieces and the kit will come with instructions. You put them together and you paint them. Kit bashing was a term that originally was referring to using all of the little pieces and making an entirely new thing and not following the directions. So you'd maybe have pieces from a bunch of different kits and you'd be bashing them together. But these days, it can mean a lot of different things. This is one of our favorite YouTubers, The Craftsman. He made a little speeder out of a pen cap. We're doing bashing together tiny toys. So we had a box of tiny toys. A lot of them came from kids meals at fast food restaurants over the last 12 years. So have quite a collection of these little plastic toys. So everybody chose the ones they wanted to mix and match and make into something new. And then I took a Dremel, a rotary tool, and this blade here is for plastic. And I was just cutting them apart. I did this out at the side because it's stinky when you're cutting plastic. And it's a little gruesome, <laughs> sort of dismembering the toys. <laughs> so... Did I ever tell you guys about back in 2016 when I was working on the Moana premiere and I was making all the Kakamora and I had to make a whole bunch of them and I didn't have time to sculpt all of the arms and legs. And so I went to the store and I bought like every baby doll, basically. I went to a couple of different stores and bought all their baby dolls. And I was, I then went home and chopped off their arms and legs and used their arms and legs and sculpted the chunky toes and the real sharp claws onto the, the baby legs. But that way I didn't have to sculpt the whole thing. And they were nice and lightweight and they were real easy to attach because they were hollow and it worked out really, really well. But when I was checking out at the store, store, the second store I went to, the cashier said, oh, I should do that more often. And I was like, excuse me? And she said, donate toys. That's so good. I'm so glad you're doing that. Because I had like a shopping cart full of dolls and she just assumed that I was donating them all. And I didn't correct her. That's my shame. That's my confession. <laughs> I didn't say, oh no, I, I, no, I'm going to take them home and dismember them. I didn't, I didn't tell her that. It's okay. They went to a good home. It's so weird. Wow. Okay. So once I had them all chopped up, then I sanded them and ground off any of the rough edges and then wired my pieces together. Mine's complicated. The girls did simpler ones. You guys were smart. <laughs> I don't know when to stop. We all know this, it's established. I don't know when to quit. So I wired pieces together, used foil, aluminum foil, to bulk up the torso of this guy. And then we are doing a first for our channel. We're using Aves Epoxy Sculpt to put these things together and sculpt additional pieces. Aves Epoxy Sculpt is a two-part putty. It comes in two different tubs and you mix equal parts together and you knead them together and it becomes like a clay. You work with it like like you would work with air dry clay or just regular kiln fire clay. It smooths out if you use water. It's real easy to work with, except when you're mixing the clay, you're supposed to wear gloves. After that, you're not supposed to have to, but it always makes me itchy if I don't wear gloves the whole time, but I'm bad at smoothing things out if I have gloves, so I cut the fingertips off of the gloves, <laughs> but I'm smoothing it with water. Another thing to know about Epoxy Sculpt is it's self cure and it hardens itself. So you don't bake this, which is great for this because I, I can't put these thousands of mystery toys in the oven because probably half of them would melt and the other half would give off toxic fumes of some sort. So this is great because it hardens on its own. It also hardens super strong, like way stronger than Sculpey. It's mega, mega strong. I had a friend who saw me using it for a repair on a prop or a, an event and he said, oh, I love that stuff. I use it to repair my engine. <laughs> he had plugged a hole in his something. I I'm not good with engines, but he plugged a hole in something. <laughs> with this stuff. It's very, very strong. It's watertight, interior, exterior, heat resistant, good stuff. But yeah, like I said, it makes my fingies itch. <laughs> so 
So Tyler is assembling hers using the epoxy sculpt. It's real sticky when you first mix it. It's like super sticky and really squishy. And then after about 20 minutes, it's less sticky, but still pretty squishy. And then after an hour, it starts getting stiffer and firmer and you can kind of cut in details, but it's harder to squish and smooth edges out. If this right here, I was squishing and smoothing edges into the toys and the harder it got, the more challenging that was. Epoxy Sculpt is pretty darn cool stuff. You can get it on Amazon. We're just using clay tools. This one's Tyler's, it's adorable. Put the dog head and that big orange round thing. It was a fireball that a toy launched <laughs> and you made it into a tail, which is genius. I was trying to, for the connection in the tail and into the body, I was trying to make it look like some of the texture on it. Uh -huh. I don't know if it worked out or not. It totally looks like it was always there for sure. We added a wire to wire the tail to the body so that it is a little sturdier, but the epoxy sculpt is real sturdy. And I mean, once it dries, it's not going anywhere and it'll stick to anything. I love epoxy sculpt, but I almost never use it because it's so much prep for me. When I'm using epoxy sculpt, I've got the gloves with the fingers cut out, but I also, before I put the gloves on, I coat my hands in something that will kind of protect them and make it easier for the clay to come off. So like petroleum jelly or the they make specific barrier cream that you can put on that's for right before you're doing something messy like working on a car engine or painting. It's supposed to make it so that the stuff doesn't stick and it works really well for the epoxy sculpt and then it also makes it so that I don't get itchy. <laughs> so if I'm making a lot of small batches, I will use up all but just a little bit of the first batch and I'll have that little chunk of the first batch sitting off to the side. And then when that starts to kind of start getting hard, I know that the first batch is starting to get hard and I need to wash my hands because once it starts getting hard, it's real hard to wash off your fingies. But it'll wash off with, with soap and water if you get to it before it hardens. And also your tools, you wanna wash your tools. So I keep a little chunk of the first batch so I know how much time I have to wash my fingies. And then when I finish sculpting, I'll keep a little chunk of the last batch and set it aside. And that way I know when the last stuff is hardened enough to start sanding or whatever. I was sculpting the ears and mommy showed me and I kind of messed up the first time and then I kind of messed up the second time but I kind of made it work. I think they turned out so cute. They're perfect. And I think it was really clever to put the ears on the outside of the egg. It makes it so much cuter. I found this little head that was sort of already alienish, and so I gave it the mouth from the other alien guy. I think he's he's from a movie. He's from a movie. What is it? Home? Can't remember. He's from a movie, and then this guy was just some random little alien dude. And so I gave him the mouth of the first guy, and then gave the first guy the horns that this guy had, so that they looked like they were the same type of guy. <laughs> and then we had four of that one that's like a Skylanders character with the big hammers. We had four of them. Those. So I used one for this one, and one for the other one. We've got Hulk's arms and the Hulk's legs. <laughs> So my goal for mine was, mine had articulated arms. There's two different toys here that have arms that move if you push a button. And then there's a littler one that has one set of arms that move if you push the button. And I wanted to make sure that the arms still worked even when it was finished. So I was careful what I chopped off and what I didn't chop off. And I gave my little cars to ride and they're so happy. I wanted them to be these sort of, you know, bashed abominations, but also be real happy and cute. What did you guys think of epoxy sculpt? Because this was you guys' first time ever using it. I don't That's usually cool. let you touch it because it makes me itchy. That's cool. It was cool. Was it pretty easy to work with? Yeah. And neither one of you got itchy hands. So either the barrier worked or you just aren't allergic to it. Or both. Do you like it better or Sculpey better? I don't know. It's I like Super Sculpey because you don't have to... Wear gloves. Mm, a protective layer. Or mix it. <laughs> the mixing's a pain in the butt. I've, had, I've done giant projects with epoxy sculpt where my hands just ached for days afterwards because I had to mix so much of that stuff and kneading it all together it took so much time. 
This is Sam removing the eyes on this pony. This was the epic freak out because I was dabbing the Q-tips in the acetone and handing them to Sam one at a time and I dabbed a little too hard or something and the bottle of acetone just fell out of my hand and flooded the table and there were tools everywhere. There was art everywhere, plastic that we were cutting on and the stuff is underneath it and I know that I've got literally seconds before the acetone eats through the finish on the table. So I'm throwing things everywhere and I'm screaming and Sam's screaming. <laughs> We're painting everything with a base coat. We're starting with the primer. Then we're gonna paint on top of it. Yeah, you got to use spray paint. Your fingers weren't strong enough for spray paint until real recently. It's hard to control how much is coming out when you have little tiny fingies. The nice thing about spray paint is it dries real fast goes on really fast, especially all the nicks and crannies would have taken forever. But it's stinky and it's messy, so we did it outside. But it's also handy because since it dries so fast, I was sort of misting on different colors to see what I liked and what I didn't like. And I sort of chose colors based on what looked good in the spray paint. There's Sam's egg, Sam's first time spray painting. The key with spray paint is shake it up really, 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 really good and then do light coats. Lots of light coats is way better than a thick coat because thick coats get drippy and weird and <laughs> don't necessarily dry properly. They're garlic. <laughs> That's the other thing, we could use spray paint on these because we didn't use any polymer clay. And usually when we're sculpting, we're using polymer clay so we can't use spray paint. You know me, any chance to get out the spray paint and I'm on it, <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Here I am painting the first of 700 coats of orange on top of the blue. Good times. So this was a challenge trying to cut in around all the little pieces because there were the handle and the arms and legs and I didn't want to touch it up too much. So I was trying to be tidy, but it, I, there's a lot of little pieces. The arms move, so that was handy because I could move them out of my way. I love this little bear buggy. It was for one of your baby dolls that just got lost somewhere. So we had the little baby buggy, but no, no baby. And then the other one has the bee on top of a Hot Wheels. It was like a beaten up old Hot Wheels. I stuck the bee on top. I think it was just like the bottom of the Hot Wheels. Just the, the chassis? Yeah. It might have been how much attention I was paying. Like the top had been ripped off or something. It's real possible. And I did some dry brushing to bring out the highlights. Dry brushing is great for bringing out highlights and that's where you get a little bit of paint on the brush and you can paint it out on a different surface to make sure that there's not too much and then you just kind of brush it across. It'll hit all of those things that stick out and kind of give them a little bit of a highlight. You'd use a lighter color for a dry brush usually and a darker color for a wash usually. So this is doing a really dark blue wash that's mixing the paint with water and then painting it on and getting it in all the nooks and crannies and wiping it off of the high parts and that just kind of deepens the shadows and hides the imperfections where the colors meet each other and brings out all the little details. What's happening here? I'm painting my thing. I went for black and white with a little bit of pink for the eyes and the bow. Yeah, I love the black and white. I think it turned out so cute. I think it's so funny that that fireball looks so much like a big puffy tail now. He's kind of like a panda? Yeah. The... Like a panda fox wolf. Pony. Pony. <laughs> <laughs> We're using acrylic paints on these. Here's Sam drawing a new face on her little pony. It was so cute. You made her nose kind of pink, a little pink tinted nose and an open mouth and closed eyes. You swapped them because she had open eyes and a closed mouth and you swapped it to open mouth, closed eyes. <laughs> so clever. And then I'm painting all the little details on mine, let it all dry, and then came back in and started on all these little details with the little tiny brush and a blind person glasses. Because otherwise, <laughs> otherwise I won't see the details until I look at the video. <laughs> the video, <laughs> the video is clearer than my eyesight, for sure. 
So I'm darkening the shadows on his chest and giving them some warmth because the wash that I did for the shadows on the whole thing was sort of a blue tinted black and I warmed up the ones that were on that middle part because it's yellow so I gave it some orange and then I finally get to paint the silver. So I made his hammer silver, gave him some freckles and stuff too. So the ears kind of went wrong a little bit. Went got, wrong? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Because it got some on the egg, but I did the ears pretty good. Yeah, I think the ears are super cute and they were a really good idea. They were a last minute addition, but they were worth it. Mm -hmm.